Hi people, it's me on you, my pronouns are Sheen Hall, and welcome back to my channel for part two of my favorite books with disabled queer main characters. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and representation are so incredibly important to me, so I'm so excited to film this video. So the first book on this list is called Fight and Flight. This book is a middle grade contemporary following two main characters who are both sapphic, and one of them is specifically pansexual, and she has a chronic illness, and the other one is sapphic and experiences panic attacks, and the two of them start a friendship after both experiencing a school shooting. So there is definitely a trigger warning on this book for school shootings. This book is absolutely so good and it's so underrated, and I really, really enjoyed it. First of all, the characters are so well-developed and so distinct, and I loved their friendship as well as what develops to a sapphic romance so much because it's literally so well paced and so well done. The characters are so well developed individually as well as together and their friendships make so much sense. Like the plot is so intriguing and so engaging. Everything about this story is so well done, especially the conversations surrounding school shootings and how they affect different kinds of people. You know what I mean? Like this book is absolutely so good and it's so underrated. And with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called The Trouble with Robots. This story is another middle grade contemporary following two main characters who are trying to save their middle school's robotics team. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. One of the main characters is bisexual and autistic and the other main character is also asexual. This book is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. And I'm so excited to read the author's next book, which I believe comes out next year, if I'm not mistaken, or later this year. But anyway, this book is so fantastic. First of all, the queer representation was iconic and it was so lovely. The disability autism representation was so spot on. And the characters themselves are so individually well developed and I love their friendship so much. The plot is so engaging and so intriguing. Even all of the robotics elements, which I didn't fully understand at all times, was so intriguing and so engaging. This story is so authentic and it's really, really good. And it's so underrated. And I just truly enjoyed every single second of it. Also, by the way, if it sounds like I'm sick, it's because I'm recovering from being sick. But anyway, the point is, this book is absolutely so fantastic and it's so underrated. And with that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Bad Things Happen Heal. This story is a YA contemporary thriller that follows a young plus size POC queer main character with depression who is determined to solve the mystery that now hits too close to home because she has grown up in a town with a history of unsolved murders. So when people like go missing or just killed, it's like normal for her, if that makes any sense. But when her sister becomes one of them, she's now more determined than ever to start solving the mystery. I hope that makes sense. This story is absolutely so fantastic and so well done. I know that some people don't constitute mental health as disabilities, but I personally do. So that's why this book constitutes for this list. But anyway, this book is absolutely so good and so interesting. First of all, the sapphic romance was so well paced and based on such a genuine chemistry and connection. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The sister relationship made so much sense. The family dynamics were awesome. The plot is so intriguing and so engaging. The mystery is so riveting and it's so well done. And the writing is so lyrical. I think this author has another book coming out next month and I'm so excited to read it because this book really amplified my expectations for it because this book is so good and it's so underrated and it deserves so much more hype. The queerness was absolutely iconic and just so good. So anyway, with all that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Deal Mothman. This story is a middle grade contemporary following a young transgender autistic main character who is navigating the loss of his best friend who is also trans like him. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. First of all, the writing is so beautiful and it's absolutely so beautiful. Robin Gao has slowly become one of my favorite authors because their writing is so iconic and it's always consistently good every single time. You know what I mean? The plot is so engaging and so interesting. The mystery was so captivating and so well done. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The queerness representation was so good. And it felt so authentic and so nuanced, 
like everything about this book is so good and this book is absolutely so underrated like the disability representation was so good i felt so seen if you didn't know i'm autistic too and i love books like this because like they really resonate how important representation is, especially for young people, especially for young trans disabled youth. You know what I mean? Anyway, overall, this book is absolutely really, really good and it's so excellent. So with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Jude Saves the World. This book is a middle grade contemporary following a young bisexual plus size non-binary main character with ADHD and how they try to create a safe space within their community and it's about identity and friendship. This book is absolutely so iconic and it's so good. First of all, the representation was so spot on and it really amplifies my expectations for the author's next book, not just because I expect the representation to be so good, but also the story itself within the parameters of this book was so good. The plot was so engaging and so intriguing. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The friendships were so lovely and so wholesome. This book is absolutely so incredible and so well done. And I really, really enjoyed it. This book was on my April TBR, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe my May TBR. But anyway, I had really high expectations for it. And I'm so excited that it lived up to those expectations because this book deserves all the hype and so much more because it's absolutely so excellent and so good in literally every single element and not just the diverse representation but anyway with all that said i would definitely highly highly recommend it the last book on this list and certainly not the least is called the year my life went down the toilet this story is another middle grade contemporary following a young sapphic jewish main character who's navigating her new chronic illness diagnosis while also surviving middle school this story is absolutely so good and it's absolutely so excellent and it really amplifies my expectations for whatever the author writes next because their writing is absolutely so good. It's so consistently excellent. Like the characters are so well developed and so distinct and they're always so well done. Like the friendships are so well done. The sapphic romance is so cute. And it's so well paced and absolutely so lovely and excellent. The writing is fantastic and amazing. Like, the disability representation is spot on and it's awesome. The queerness is so amazing and so lovely and it truly feels authentic and just well done. This book is absolutely so excellent and it's so good and it's so underrated and it deserves so much more hype. So anyway, with all that said, this book is absolutely so excellent and I would highly, highly recommend it. So in conclusion, I hope this video helped diversify your bookshelf. Please remember that when reading about disabled voices, you don't just read about the white straight voices, that you also read books that talk about like intersectionalized identities as well. And that also goes for reading about queer voices as well. Don't get me wrong, reading about white straight disabled voices and queer white voices is also important, but it's also important to go deeper than that and read about intersectional identities as well. So I hope this video helped diversify your bookshelf in that sense. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below the strawberry emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!